molecular compounds. So again, the first step in naming a compound is identifying what kind of a compound it is, because they have different sets of rules, and you can't use the correct set of rules if you don't know what kind of a compound you're dealing with. So generally, we look at the first element. So you look at the first element. If it's a metal, it's what? It's an ionic compound. If it's not a metal, chances are good it's a molecular compound. Molecular compounds can contain two or more nonmetals. They could have lots and lots of nonmetals. We are only going to learn how to name ones with exactly two nonmetals. Okay? These are called binary molecular compounds because they have just two elements. So we take the, the name of the first element and we put a prefix on the front. This is where we use numerical prefixes like mono, di, tri, tetra, etc. to say how many. So the name of the first element. And then another prefix and then the base name of the second element again changed to ide. Is this an ion? No. But here this nonmetal Oh, so this is, yeah. So here we have two nonmetals getting married. Here it is. It's not in the other part, but it's in this part. Okay. So here we have nonmetal. Um, so this one's acting like the woman, and this one's acting like the man. Um, but they're both nonmetals. So this one changes the ending of the name. How do we know which one goes first? Well, we learned yesterday that the one that's closer to the metals goes first. We actually don't even need to know that much because they, it, you'll be given a name or you'll be given a formula and the order is already there. Here are the prefixes. You need to know these. Most of them you probably already know. Mono means one. Di means two. Tri is three. Tetra is a little weird. Uh, tetra is a prefix that means four. The game Tetris had four squares in different arrangements that were falling down, and each of the four squares had four sides, and so Tetris was kind of a play on words for its name. Penta means five, a pentagon has five sides, a hexagon has six sides. Hepta is kind of weird, that's seven, and then there's Octa, which is eight, and Nona, which is a lot like nine, and Deca is ten, like decade is ten years. Okay, so those are the prefixes we use. Like with the number one that we often just don't write, mono means one, and so there's um, many times where we leave that off. So if it's the first element and there's only one, we usually leave the word, the prefix mono off. So this compound, CO2, it's got exactly two nonmetals, carbon and oxygen, right? So the first one's carbon. We would want to put mono on front because there's one. Oxygen on the end changes its name as if it was uh, becoming part of an ionic compound. So this is oxide. And there are two oxygens, so we put dioxide. But the mono is generally dropped. So instead of calling it monocarbon dioxide, we just call it carbon dioxide. Yes? So the, the question is, in, in ionic compounds, the ide suffix is used for when there's only a single element. It's not used if there's a polyatomic ion. Here, we're, we're talking about more than one of the oxygens, but it's still a single element. So it's not really bucking the pattern. <laughs> this, isn't, this isn't, you know, a variation of carbon monoxide, I mean, uh, of uh, carbonate or something. We're looking at carbon and oxygen. It, and if we were naming, if we were naming this um, O part as an ionic compound, it would be oxide also, even if there were two of them. Because it's a single element. It, it would be any element, any nonmetal element. Still has mm hmm Yeah. 
So I will not try to trick you on this mono at the beginning and dropping it. If, if you write that on the worksheet, I'll just probably draw a line through it, but I wouldn't take off points. It's one of those little odd quirks that's a little hard to remember. And then this one's even trickier. Um, when the prefix ends with a vowel and the base name starts with a vowel, we sometimes, but not always, drop the first vowel. Um, so N2O, um, there's two nitrogens, so that would be di-nitrogen, and there's one oxygen, so mono-oxide. But the double O is just really weird looking. So is I permanent? All of these will end in "-ide", all of them. So this would be, that looks like manuxide. It's monoxide, but we don't pronounce the double O, and so we don't write the double O, it's monoxide. I won't try to trick you with that one either. Okay. So let's do a couple of examples. Um, N204. First thing is identify it as a molecular compound. Look at the first element. Is it a metal? Nope. No. No. And then there's another element over here, also a nonmetal. Two nonmetals, molecular compound. So the first element is nitrogen. I don't know how that happened. Nitrogen, how many are there? There's two nitrogens. So we put a prefix di in front. Di nitrogen, meaning two nitrogens. And then, how many of the second one? Tetra. tetra. There's four. So we use the prefix tetra. And oxygen becomes oxide. And then the question is, do we drop the A or not? Honestly, I'm not quite sure. I've seen it both ways. So I'm not going to be picky about that. We've got bigger things to worry about. So if you wrote tetraoxide or tetroxide without the A, it's fine with me. The exams are going to be multiple choice, and I will not try to trick you on that. I would not give you dinitrogen tetraoxide and dinitrogen tetroxide without the A and expect you to choose one. I'll just give you the correct one and then some really crazy ones, like nitrogen oxide or dinitrate or something. Okay. How about this one? Nitrogen trioxide. So I, I'm hearing nitrogen trioxide and nitrogen tri trihydroxide. Neither of those. It's ammonia. Oh, burn. Gotcha. Oh, that's the one with the That's a special one. Yeah. It's like share, right? This just goes with the single name. So water and ammonia, one name. They're just kind of special. Most of the other things we're going to see have two names, a first name and a last name, just like most people do. There are a few where they're going to have also a middle name, and that middle name would be hydrogen. If we were going to give this its legal name, it would be nitrogen trihydride is we take hydrogen and change the N to ide. Because technically, hydrogen is a nonmetal. Yes? Is NH4 ammonium? Mm -hmm. okay. NH4 plus is ammonium. So that's that one polyatomic cation that we have to think about. So that's ammonium ion. So it's definitely related to ammonia.